Good morning on this uh, Trinity Sunday. I uh, always get the uh, opportunity, and it seems to never fail, that I get the honor of preaching on Trinity Sunday. Most of the time, rectors, if they have an associate priest on staff, will always pass the baton of preaching on Trinity Sunday to their associate rather than they themselves preaching. So it's been no difference, it's been not much of a difference uh, in my life, but now as a priest in charge, I get to preach again on this beautiful day, Trinity Sunday. Uh, so please join me with our bulletin and our bulletin that we have before us, hopefully. And we begin our, our worship with the opening acclamation. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us, your servants, grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of your divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith and worship and bring us to that at last to see you in your one and eternal glory, O Father, who with the Son and the Holy Spirit live and reign, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep. While a wind from God swept over the face of the waters, then God said, let there be light, and there was light, and God saw the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky. And there was <clears throat> evening and there was morning a second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth and the waters that were gathered together he called seas, and God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs for, and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, the lesser night to rule the night. And the stars. God sent them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening and there was morning 
the fourth day. And God said, let the water spring forth swarms of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind in which the waters swim and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw it, that it was good. God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let the birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make man humankind in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image and the image of God, he created them male and female. He created them. God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, see, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food and to every beast of the earth and to every bird of the air and to everything that creeps on the earth and everything that has breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was good. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all the work he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens of the earth when they were created. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 8. O Lord, our governor, how exalted is your name in all the world. Out of the mouths of infants and children, your majesty is praised above the heavens. You have set up a stronghold against your adversaries to quell the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set in their courses. What is man that you should be mindful of him, the son of man that you should seek him out? You have made him but little lower than the angels. You adorn him with glory and honor. You give him mastery over the works of your hands. You put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, even the wild beasts of the field the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatsoever walks in the paths of the sea. O Lord, our governor, how exalted is your name in all the world. A reading from Paul's second letter to Corinthians. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order, listen to my appeal, agree with one another, live in peace and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Praise to you, Lord Christ. The eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him. But some doubted, and Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has, has, been, has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything 
that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Today I want to share with you my a little bit of my journey in faith. And some of you may have heard this story when I was at Grace the first time. But it's the story about when I first felt called to follow Christ. And I was very young. I was probably 16 years of age. And I was a member of my parish youth group. And I used to go out to parties and had many friends and liked to dance and was in every respect a typical teenager. On a retreat one day, after hearing a talk on surrendering your life to God, to let God take over the driving energies of your life, I decided that I would take the plunge. Maybe I was foolish. Maybe I didn't know better. I knew, though, that this was what God wanted me to do. So I went outside the retreat house, and I climbed up on a tree, sat on the tree branch, and said, Okay, God, you have me. My life, my soul, you take my life. I surrender it to you. Do with it what you want. I knew God had heard me, and he was taking me seriously. I didn't back down, but I was scared because there was a part of me that knew that I would have to give up something of this world. And it's those things that I had to give up that scared me for some reason. I didn't know what God was asking me to embrace, but to follow him. It is that way when we surrender our lives to God. What is it that more people don't do this? Why is it that more people don't do this? And why don't more people decide to follow Christ? What are some of the things that they must surrender? Well, a few days later, I heard very clearly that God was calling me to the priesthood. When I heard this, it scared me. Why? Why did this scare me? And I, and I think what scares so many people is that they don't, they don't believe that life takes on drastic change. And sometimes it does. It depends on what your life was like before the change. In today's lesson, we hear the writer of Genesis tell us that God saw all that he had made, and it was good. And indeed, it was very good. Well, as a typical teenager, guess what? I felt that becoming a priest meant leaving the world, entering a monastic type of life. No more dancing on Saturday night. No more dating, no girls, no marriage, no children, no family. I was Catholic, of course, at the time. It was for a teenager a scary thing to consider. Lord, I prayed, is this what you really want from me? Here I am, Lord. I've heard the calling you. I've heard you calling me in the night. Is it I, Lord? Well, I want to share something of what I have learned about living with Christ for the last 43 years of searching for a vocation, finding it and seeing myself begin it a, a new way as an ordained priest in God's holy Catholic and apostolic church. Our writer in Genesis said a minute, as a, we heard a minute ago, that God has power over creation. God orders creation and creation is good. The world is good. And humanity is good. We are commanded to have dominion over creation. Now, dominion or power over means possession over, to hold it and to let it go as at will. Let me define what I mean by the world and what I think the writer of Genesis means by the world. World means all created reality except persons all material things and immaterial things as personal talents and abilities personal qualities and attainments 
money, house, books, piano, computer, good looks, athletic ability, musical ability, a charming smile, curly hair, straight hair, straight white teeth, good health, academic degrees, artistic talents, good health, intellectual genius or reputation, power or influence, personal charm, and charisma. These are all abilities and attainments of humanity. How should Christians regard them? Well, in the gospel message, we're really in my bones. If the gospel message were really in my bones and in my mind and in my heart, how should my attitude be towards those things? If I surrendered my life to Christ today, what should my attitude to the world be to these things? As best as I can understand Jesus and his good news, it seems to me that living a life as a Christian involves a spirit of possession and dispossession. To be able to harmonize these two spirits is the genius of Christian spirituality. By possession, I mean joining God in pronouncing all things in creation are good, very good, in fact. Possession would also mean to acquire knowledge and enjoy the good things of the world, including one's own personal gifts and blessings. Possession means reaching out to embrace life and all parts of it. To the glory of God is a person who is fully alive. The Christian spirit of possession sees a unique beauty in each of the seasons of the year. Here is the music and the poetry of the universe, smells the fragrance of a day in spring, and teaches and touches the soft petals of a flower. Possession tastes the deliciousness of every day, senses, will, emotions, mind. The spirit of possession helps me become fully alive, functioning in all parts of my unique giftedness. And as I said earlier, the genius of Christian spirituality is to be able to integrate the spirit of possession with the spirit of dispossession. My possession of the world must be lived in a spirit of readiness for dispossession. All good and delightful things must never be allowed to own us, possess us, or shackle us. This possession implies that I'm always free in my own person, liberated from the tyranny that possession can easily exercise over me. I always remain to, own my, to be my own free person. The world may never dominate or manipulate me. The world may never prevent me from making my own free decisions. All of us have a sense of what it means to be tyrannized, manipulated, or coerced by another human being. Things, even good things and delightful things, things that God made can do the same to us. They can enslave us and deprive us of our freedom. What would it profit us if we should give and if we should gain the whole world and suffer the loss of our own freedom, of our own persons? There is a saying, we are all born with closed fists and die with open hands. I like it. I like this description because it describes what the Christian life is really all about. We reach out to grab all the fullness of life and creation. But nothing is so fastened to my life that I cannot let it go or give it up. Nothing is really enjoyable unless we are ready to give it up. Without this freedom, we are slaves to our possessions. We are not mastered, masters, but mastered. And what is it that God has asked us to be over creation? He said that we should have dominion over it, to control it, not let it control us. God created us in his image. 
And when we live acknowledging God's image in us, we live according to the principle and belief that God created us to say, this world is very good. And yes, to say, I can control this world because I did not let the world control me. Last week, we celebrated along with thousands of other Episcopalians and Christians the day of Pentecost. We prayed for the Holy Spirit to enter in the lives of the church and fill us with the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Christ, so that we might live a life stronger in God's family. If God created us in his image, and we have Christ in us, then we should be able to live according to a spirit of dispossession and possession of the world. The biblical principle is clear. Love persons and use things. Well, here I am. Here we are. All of us gathered together like this little group of disciples on that mountain of Galilee. There was doubt, but his presence did not take away the commandment of Jesus. It does not bother Jesus that his audience is small. To them, he entrusts a mission that reaches beyond Israel to all the nations of the world. The evangelist Matthew begins by naming Jesus Emmanuel, God with us. And he ends his gospel with an echo of that abiding presence. I am with you always. Always. Go and make disciples of the whole world. All of creation. Jesus has sent us the Holy Spirit to illuminate our way. To teach us how to share our faith with others and to live a life in true freedom. Freedom from the world, and yet living and enjoying the world that God created. This may seem like a big job. Indeed it is. But God only asks each of us one by one. Whether it was a young teenage boy sitting on a tree branch, looking at the ocean and contemplating God's beauty, or it is you speaking to a friend about how your faith in God has made your life richer and fuller. You can be the arms of Christ to embrace and, and to embrace and the voice of Jesus to teach all that he has commanded us. This is the message that God, the creator of the world, sent Jesus the Son to incarnate in his life and death and resurrection. The power of Rome and the cross and death had no power over Jesus. And now the Holy Spirit lives in all of us, all of us Christians in the Christian church, to proclaim to the world the wonderful saving actions of God who loves us and asks us only to love each other as ourselves. Again, to go out and see the world as part of God's plan to bring order, God's order, calling people out of sinfulness to forgiveness, to compassion and mercy, to goodness, and to seeing God in all things everywhere. And that we should go out sanctifying the world for our use. Making all this happen and using these words in the name of the Father, God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Together, let us affirm our faith through the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, 
the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he's worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with, also you. with you. Let us pray. For those of whom our prayers have been requested this week, especially <coughs> for Andy's family and Sydney as she assists with that family, for Liz Sherman, for Jim, Susan C., Martha, Lisa, Joey, and family, Rosianna and family, Austin and family, Edna, Kathy K., Susan B., Carol H., and the repose of the soul of June and prayers for her family. We continue our prayers for victims of violence throughout the world, for our travelers in our parish community, for our veterans and all in our uniformed services at home and abroad, especially Evan Gardner, all who are serving in our military around the world. We pray for all who have died of the coronavirus that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. On the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for La Iglesia Anglicana de Mexico. On the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the Anglican community and the ministries of all its provinces. Eternal Trinity, in the beginning, you created the heavens and the earth separated the dry land from the waters, the day from the night, provided seeds and vegetation, living creatures of every kind, and ourselves, male and female, human in your image. Glory to God, Holy Creator, Redeemer, Comforter. We praise you. We praise and you and highly you. exalt you forever. Eternal Trinity, our God-given intellect, the love of Christ, and the holy courage of the Spirit. Give us the ability and the call to serve all the people of God with justice, peace, and in peace. Help us to strongly encourage the leaders of our nation and in the world of the necessity to do likewise. We pray especially for, and please add any petitions, Glory to God, Holy Creator, Redeemer, Comforter. We praise you and highly exalt you forever. Eternal Trinity, bestow the grace of hope and healing upon those who are ill in mind, body, or spirit, and grant those who give them care, continuing strength, and perseverance. We Pray especially for <clears throat> glory to God, Holy Creator, Redeemer, Comforter. We, we praise, praise you and highly exalt, highly exalt you forever. forever. Eternal Trinity, we implore you to set the fire of Pentecost as the essential beacon before those who are lost in the icy winter of grief. Carry those who have left our earthly experience into the warmth of holy comfort and peace in your life everlasting. We pray especially for Andy and Jesse. Yeah. 
Glory to God, Holy Creator, Redeemer, Comforter. We praise you and highly exalt you forever. Eternal Trinity, for all those who have called <coughs> and blessed as guides for your souls in this life, we ask you for their peace of heart, strength of mind, courage of conviction. Let us hold fast together and walk through all blessings and trials as we journey towards everlasting life in your Holy of Holies. We pray especially for Father Frank. Glory to you, God, Holy Creator, Redeemer, Comforter. We praise you and highly exalt you forever. Eternal, whole, one and all, anoint us with the essence of your presence in all that we do, think and pray. We beseech you through your Son, Jesus, and the comfort of your Holy Spirit, who live and reign with you, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Extend to each other a sign of Christ's love and peace. Do we have any birthdays or anniversaries? Yesterday was um, our an second anniversary. We got married in April, but we had our church ceremony in June. So it's been 22 years. Fantastic. Woo! Congratulations. 22. A lot, so a lot of people think the six is our anniversary. Wonderful. Any this birthdays? Nick Fowler's birthday. Nick Fowler's birthday this week. Okay. Fantastic. All right, then let us together pray the birthday anniversary prayer. Watch over thy servants, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts may thy peace, which passeth understanding, abide all the days of their lives, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now our offertory hymn by Martha. <clears throat> But if the 
weather holds, will have missed the point. That's where I need to go. Sometimes I ask to sneak a closer look, skip to the final chapter of the book, and then may the stairs clear from some of the pain that it took to get us where we are this far. Rounds in its futility, and even I've got to laugh at me. Nobody gets to miss the storm of what will be. Just holding on for the ride. What is time, and the what is all? Who make it fun? The weather holds. But if the weather holds, then I've missed the point. That's where I need to go. Thank you, Martha. And let us remember to continue to um, make our offerings and not quarantine them. And uh, please send your offerings in uh, through email or please mail them as well. Thank you so much. All things come from the O Lord. And uh, thine own, thine own have, we have we given thee. And now let us pray in the words that our Savior Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us together pray the prayer of general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray. Give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. A prayer for spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart, and as though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you, and never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. And the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and be amongst you always. Amen. Well, good morning again, um, my family at Grace. Um, I have, we have some news, um, which is that um, the bishop has, uh, has designated June 21st as the first day that parishes can resume um, worship in inside their sanctuaries, inside their churches. It is only, however, a suggested date, and not all parishes will actually be opening their doors in terms of the church doors. Um, so, and, and one of the things that she is also doing is at some things that she's discouraging, discouraging people who are over 65 and have 
um, underlying health conditions from attending uh, church uh, in, in a worship space. Um, we looked at our um, uh, directory and our people of grace and we concluded our task force this week met and we concluded that well over 75, 80% of our congregation is probably 65 and over and has some underlying health issues. And so we decided that it's probably better to continue our uh, online um, worship services electronically this way for most of us. And uh, so what we will be doing is on June 21st, we, a uh, small group of people, we will be meeting in the church uh, and offering our, our, our online presence to you in our worship service from within the church. So I'll be back inside of Grace. Martha will be singing uh, to my left there and she'll be singing uh, as well. We'll have um, uh, a videographer, I think that's gonna be Cindy, and uh, we'll have a lector. I think that might be Ann Judge. So four of us will be in church, at least bringing you, uh, our, bringing our service from within the walls of Grace Episcopal Church, from the building. Um, and we'll continue in that way for a while, uh, maybe a month or so. We'll see how things begin to pan out in the state and whether it'll, uh, it'll allow us to come together uh, in a much more uh, fruitful way, in a safe way. Um, we realize that, um, uh, that we were, we're all hoping and we really want to be able to celebrate communion soon together, but um, rather than um, a few of us receive communion, uh, we want to wait until all of us can together uh, receive communion together. And so we're going to wait on uh, celebrating the great Thanksgiving until we can all be together uh, celebrating the, the great Thanksgiving. Uh, that being said, uh, I hope that that dispels any confusion or rumors about uh, about what our worship services are going to be like in the future. Uh, and that worship service will be uh, um, live fed. Uh, we'd be live feeding possibly through YouTube and Facebook. And we'll get you more information about that. But when we send out the bulletin to you, you'll have the links to be able to go to YouTube or Facebook and be able to uh, see the service being live streamed for you. So it won't be over Zoom. It'll be uh, via uh, YouTube, and it'll be live fed. Um, yesterday, uh, a few of us, working party, I want to thank uh, Sydney, Georgia, Martha, uh, and Sydney uh, for joining me at the second floor of the coach house as we uh, cleared and cleaned up the closets, and uh, we threw away a lot of stuff that had been there for a long time that, that uh, didn't need to go into storage. And so uh, we begin this week, Sir Pro, Contractors will begin working on the first floor, redoing the, um, uh, the walls and putting the drywall up, and soon we will have the downstairs ready. And simultaneously, uh, the second floor will be um, uh, also evacuated, and they'll put everything into storage. That's why we needed to, uh, to go yesterday to uh, uh, clean up and, um, and make sure we, we only put in storage. That was what we wanted to really keep for the future. And so... Um, they will be also, Sir Pro will be uh, taking everything up upstairs, second floor, uh, and, and removing that, putting it in storage so that we can put new flooring uh, in. That means that the uh, that nasty old red carpet uh, will be removed from there. We'll have some nice new carpet flooring in there. Yes, I, I agree with you. <laughs> so we're all happy about that. Once And once we're all back in church together, we're also going to have a beautiful new coach house. Uh, and it's just going to be like, you know, Wow, this is great. This is, and we got a new priest too at the same time. So it all, it's all going to be really good. So we're all really happy about that. Are there any other announcements uh, that we need to make? Cindy, go right ahead. Uh, well, I just wanted to uh, reiter, uh, the for the reading. Uh, Anne's going to be one of them. I'll be one of them too. But if anybody would like to volunteer, I did send an email out to all the readers. But if there's anybody else that's interested in coming to the church and doing all the reading, uh, please email me and let me know. Um, there'll only be about three or four of us in the church, so it'll be pretty safe. But it is, you're going to be doing all the readings. Um, and um, so if anybody wants to help um, and you feel safe, thank you, Mara, and you feel safe that, you know, like I said, it's, it's not a lot of people there. And also, um, if you don't get the emails from the church, the grace notes, 
please let us know. Um, you can email the church directly or email me and we'll make sure you're signed up. Um, there's also a, uh, I just wanted to remind everybody about the church survey that Janet has in the uh, email that we got from the church. Um, and that is about it. Oh, and the prayer flags. We're obviously not going to have them on the 21st, but uh, if you would like to make prayer flags, please email me and we'll deliver them to you and you'll have plenty of time to uh, put them all together. That's it. Um, Shoshana, Shoshana, why don't you uh, talk about the group you're getting together? You're muted right now. No. Okay, so um, I think I have in four people plus myself that are interested in a texting-based anti-racism working group. So if anybody else is interested, um, my phone number is in the this week's bulletin. Um, so we're just going to kind of text um, thoughts on what's going on nationally and on what we can do to further our anti-racism work, um, whether it's donations or reading and educating ourselves or other kinds of activism just to kind of take action during this time of national upheaval. So I'm looking forward to getting started. I've been really overwhelmed with the amount of resources out there and a couple of you have sent me further resources, so thank you. So we'll be working on a, as a group on how to kind of sort through and pick and choose where we want to start. Um, so that's all I had to say about that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Shoshana. There are a lot of resources as well in our diocesan website. So if you go to the Episcopal Church uh, San Diego on our diocesan website, there are a lot of resources there. Uh, Bishop, uh, Presiding Bishop, Bishop Curry has uh, issued statements as well. And so there, uh, the church is responding uh, very um, forcefully about this issue. And so we welcome that. And um, I know that there are working groups happening throughout the diocese as well. So I encourage you all to participate in those. Are there any other announcements that I'm we're waiting on? If anybody needs to make an announcement, just unmute yourself and, and speak. Thank you. Seeing that there are no other announcements then, <laughs> let, us go forth, let us go forth in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks, Thanks. be to God. Thank you. Thank you.